Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. This video is a homework Excel tutorial in linear programming for operations management, part A. So let's bring up the problem. The Golden Company is planning the production of two products in a popular product line. They collect the following information. Product X, product Y, resources 1, 2, and 3, weather capacity, and profit. So the structure of the problem is a product mix problem. You have been des designated as the analyst to respond to their request. So Glenda, chairman of the production planning committee, was first interested in the optimal production mix that produces the maximum profit without exceeding capacity. Well, that's the definition of a product mix problem. What is the profit from the optimal mix? So let's solve the problem. So let's bring in Excel. And first, let's highlight the prob uh, Let's uh, highlight the data. Control C to copy. Uh, let's bring back Excel, and let's come down to here, and let's Control V and paste. Okay, and the first, we'll just solve this thing. Let's increase this. Okay, uh, let's uh, change everything to where format it. Let's format this a little bit to get it. Uh, here we go. Okay. So the first thing we need to do over here is have the values. Uh, and then down here, we're going to have the optimal mix. Okay. And so since this is the optimal mix, uh, let's go ahead and take this and uh, eliminate uh, the borders. Since this is an optimal mix, this right here, let's let's box this in, and then let's shade this a little bit just to highlight it, because this this is the uh, decision variables that uh, the uh, solver Excel is going to be changing. Okay, uh, now the values. That's going to be the sum product of the coefficient times the actual variables F4 to fix return and we copy those down all the way down to the profit now we'll box this in and shade that because that's what we're going to be optimizing so this right here let's box this in this represents the solution let's go to data let's go to solver and the optimal the objective function is going to be this because we want to maximize it by changing these cells and add our constraint set well, the constraints that simply are these values here are less than or equal to the capacity. And OK. Uh, Non-negativity constraints to make this a simplex algorithm. And then say solve. And it says that uh, solver found a solution. And there it is. Say OK. 1120 then is going to be the answer to question number one. So we're on our way. So question two says, the committee requested information about the utilization of resources at the optimal product mix. Well, the optimal product mix is 16x and 23 watt. Uh, specifically, they wanted to know which resources had capacity remaining. So which resource has the maximum capacity remaining? Well, which one is it? Let's come back here. Uh, so this question we can say remaining here. Uh, well, that's simply going to be the capacity minus the values. And then copy that down. That's all there is to it. Okay, well, re resource 3 then, and there's the answer to this one, resource 3 has the maximum remaining capacity. The other two at the optimal solution have zero remaining, so they're 100% utilized. OK, let's go on. Question three. The utilization of resources was important to Al since he was head of the material management, uh, which included resource capacity. Since Al frequently requested hypothetical situations to gain insight and resource utilization, Al proposed an alternative. Purely for comparative comparison purposes with the optimal solution, what would be the impact 
on the utilization of resources if we produce 18 units of x and 18 units of y, which, which is true about the remaining resources at the optimal solution, or compared, this should be compared to the optimal solution. Okay, so let's bring this back. If I can get to it, here it is. Okay, uh, again, what's going to be remaining? Oops. Let's format this again. Okay, but now we want the mix of Al. And he said 18 and 18. What if you take 18 on each one of these? Is that true? Yeah, 18 on X and 18 on Y. Okay. Uh, then what's going to be remaining? Well, that's going to equal your capacity minus the actual values, which is the sum product of the coefficients times the mix, which is 18, 18, Al's mix. F4 to freeze those in parentheses, and there's remaining capacity. Let's bring this down. So for Al, that's that question. This one's Al's question. We can come over here and we can see it's going to, this is the remaining capacity. Uh, 130, 42, and 90. Okay, well, we can see here, increase this a little bit, that resource one has the maximum, resource two has the minimum. So it's one, three, two. So uh, resource one will have the greatest remaining resources and resource two will have the least remaining resources. Okay, that's good. Question four. Representatives from the sales department reacted to the possible production amounts by proposing minimum requirements to meet their customers' future needs. Charles wanted to add a minimum production requirement of 24 to product X. X. Apparently, that's what Charles is, is selling to his clients. And Dan wanted to add a minimum production requirements of 24 to product Y. Well, Dan is probably the salesperson for product Y. Ellen cautioned, that will not be feasible. Well, I don't think it would be feasible if they are both applied together. I'm not sure if each one is infeasible if applied alone. We need to examine the impact of these requests. At this point, you were asked to determine the feasibility of the request, which statement is true. Okay, so it's 24 and 24, so let's do this. Okay, we want a mix of Charles. We want a mix of Dan. We want a mix of both. <laughs> okay, and it was 24, 0, 0, 24, and 24, 24. Whoops, 24. Okay, so over here, let's look at the remaining of Charles, the remaining of Dan, and the remaining of both. So let's just do that over here. Okay, let's go box that in because that's what that's going to be the answer of this one. Okay, we want the remaining, so that's going to equal the capacity minus the sum product of the coefficients here comma, uh, the mix of Charles, which are these, F4 to freeze, and that's going to be the first one, let's do Dan next, equals the capacity minus the sum product of the coefficient of uh, resource 1 times the mix of Dan this time, F4 to freeze, okay, and then let's do both, equals the capacity again minus uh, the sum product of the coefficients times the mix of both F4 to freeze and uh, there we have whoa right off the bat there's negative so if we bring this down let's see what's going on here uh, yeah Charles and Dan are fine these are positive uh, results so that's not infeasible when you have a negative, that simply means your capacity is not enough to meet this uh, this mix. It's not enough because uh, you have a negative uh, requirement here. 
requirement of 110 more, 84 more. There's enough for resource three. So both will be, this indicates an infeasible LP. Both will be infeasible. Charles can, if only Charles. Dan can, if only Dan. But you can't do both. So we come back here and says satisfying the request from Charles and Dan together will result in an infeasible problem, which is true. Okay, question five. Gail suggests the requirements that for every product Y, there must be two of product X produced. So Gail is probably part of the design group or probably some type of a, a design engineer saying, look, you can't just produce X and Y because you're going to need two X's for every Y. So this kind of requirement is common. The committee was concerned that the additional constraint would reduce the profit significantly. Gail disagreed that the profit would de decrease significantly if the profit is optimized with the additional constraint she, su she suggested. What is a reduction in profit at the optimal LP solution with the constraint suggested by Gail? Okay, this is interesting. For every Y, there must be two of product X. So let's look at this. Okay, for every Y, so let's go X and Y. Whoops, Y. So f again, let's make sure for every Y, there's two X's. So our result is for every Y, there are two x's. Okay, so what would that be? Well, if y equals 1, x has to equal 2. So the constraint will be x equals 2y. Because if y equals 1, then 2 times 1 is 2, x equals 2. So that's the constraint that that's that's the additional constraint that has to be added. Standard form is bringing all the variables to the left-hand side. So it's going to be x minus 2y equals 0. That's the constraint we need. And there it is. Okay, we're going to add this constraint up here. Let's add it here. The coefficient is 1. The coefficient is minus 2. And then the capacity is 0. But now the value is going to be the sum product of the coefficients, uh, the coefficients is this, times the mix, the optimal mix now, we'll do this here, F4 to fix, and that's the right-hand side. So we want the, this to be zero. This is going to be a quality constraint. Okay, so now, uh, right here, let's take this, Control-C, and put this down here and paste it. And this is going to equal the profit without, without constraint. Okay. And then copy this and put it down here again. Uh, this, is, this is the uh, profit with the constraint. Whoops. Let me put a thing in there. There we go. And uh, left justify. There we go. So now this right here and then down here is going to be the difference. There we go. Okay. So we need to put this constraint in here. There, here's the additional constraint. Let's box this. Let's go ahead and shade it because we're going to add the constraint. This is an additional constraint. Okay, and then this, the uh, solution is going to be here, and this will be the difference, which will equal this minus this, and we'll see what the difference is. Right now it's nothing, uh, but we'll see here in just a second. So let's go to solver, add a constraint, uh, which the left-hand side is going to be the values here, and this is going to be equal to the right-hand side, which is the con uh, zero. Okay. And now let's solve this thing. And as it turns out, found a solution. Say, okay. Uh, oh, look at this. This is interesting. Whoops. Control. Bring this down here. And paste it. 
and the difference is zero, uh, there is no difference between the two. And so the difference or the reduction in profit is zero. There's no difference. Okay. And so that's uh, so Gail. Well, Gail is right. She disagrees that uh, she says uh, the profit would decrease. Disagrees that the profit would decrease significantly because the de decrease is zero. That's a pretty insignificant decrease. So good job, Jail. Uh, jail. Good job, Gail. <laughs> you did a good. You did a good job. Okay. Uh, well done. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this uh, part A. I hope this helps. Between now and the next time, hey, take care.